are made where we believe that you can be a millionaire in all six aspects of health. We do episodes every week on physical, mental, intellectual, social, spiritual, and financial health. Today's episode is going to be a great one. It's going to be on physical health and the lazy man's five minute workout. So if you only got five minutes, we're going to learn what's going to be best for you. Millionaires Are Made is the show built on the fundamental belief that every person you meet knows something that you don't and that there's something to be learned from everyone in this beautiful, beautiful world. In the spirit of authenticity and to remove any sort of bias, I don't even know who the guests on this episode will be until about 15 to 20 minutes before. And we only talk about how the show is going to go and we don't talk about each other's tips so that they're raw and authentic from each of our guests. If you think you have something to share, and I know you do, we would love to have you as a guest. Please come sign up, www.millionairesaremade.com. The link is dropped below. We'd love to hear your information, get you on a show, and let you spread your knowledge to the world. On that note, if you have a topic that you have not seen or want us to go over again with new guests, please let us know. We love topics. We love learning and exploring all sorts of new things. That It's kind of fun for us to go find guests that have expertise in that topic. So please give us topic ideas. If you also have a podcast and you need some guests, there's four lovely people that will be on this episode that would love to come share more knowledge and be on your podcast. Just give us a little DM or an email and we'll hook you up with all their info. As our guests come on, they'll have their uh, socials dropped. Audience, please, please, please comment. Please, please, please ask questions. Please, please, please follow and like and share not only our socials, but also for our guests because it's so nice to take time out of their day to go give you free information to help you grow on your life journey. If you love our show, which I already know you do, and you're looking for something a little more one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer free coaching sessions as part of me giving out more information as much as I can. So the link for that's being dropped. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, I'm sure that uh, a lot of our guests as well, you can reach out to them on social media and get some one-on-one -on -one time with them. Ooh, please like, share, subscribe, follow all that stuff so we can keep this show going on the road. We do have some awesome shout outs that we're going to be going through. Uh, first off, we've got rock solid women's empowerment coaching. If you are a woman that wants to be empowered, which I, all of you should, um, the link is dropped right now. Meet Bonnie Hardy. She's a woman's empowerment coach in Atlanta, Georgia, specializes in mindset, gratitude, and personal development. Also a guest on this show, offers a super unique, really cool approach, combining vision boards with the wheel of life. And she owns and manages the Airbnb, Atlanta Airbnb property on site. So it's a cool little retreat. Go check her out. Connect with her for holistic empowerment. We've also got our reboot by John. Meet Charles W. Smith Jr. He's a multi-award winning entrepreneur. Has also been a guest on this show. Published author. Dynamic motivational speaker. He has a powerful message. Reboot my way of thinking. He provides all these sweet tools for gaining clarity on your identity and also empowerment. A little more on the male side here. Connect with him at uh, the link being dropped below. Start your transformative journey today. Then if you've got some long hair problems, either yours or a loved ones, uh, we want to introduce Whoopsie Hair Ties. Uh, the owner has actually been a guest on this show. Style meets resilience. Uh, Whoopsie Hair Ties redefine the ordinary with their versatile, durable accessories. Celebrate strength and uniqueness with every twist. Join and embrace the power of Whoopsie Hair Ties. And then one of our favorite, favorite sponsors, Gunther's Adventures. Uh, Gunther's the name of an awesome upgraded Toyota SUV that goes pretty much everywhere in this world. Off-roading, 4x4. Um, check out the adventures. Uh, link is being dropped right now. It's a one-stop shop for adventure, inspiration, and cleverly designed Toyota upgrades. Made by my man himself, Joe. Whether you're a seasoned Overlander or a weekend warrior, Gunther's helps you push your Toyota further. Today, our episode is on physical health, five-minute workout. That's all you got. That's all you got, and it's better than squat. The practice in that one. Here's my tip. Here's something I do. With, anytime I'm in office or anytime I'm working, which I'm doing literally right now, I just got done doing them, I have an alarm 
on my Google Home or smart speaker, whatever, every 15 minutes from basically when I start working till when I'm done, every 15 minutes, I do 11 push-ups. That's it. That's super simple. Takes like 10 seconds, helps you stop, focus, reset, go on to a new task. Um, I do like 15 minutes of, you know, focused work on one project, go do some push-ups, go to the other. If I get tired of push-ups, I'll do sit-ups, do something else. And overall, it probably adds to, you know, five to 10 minutes, but it's something simple and easy that you can do to help break up your day and keep your physical health top notch. But we got more tips to give you. So first up, we're going to bring Sam out here and Sam's going to give us another awesome tip. Sam, who are you? Hey, good morning, Austin. So Sam Westfall, uh, founder and owner of Archery in Motion, which is a moving target platform. Um, long time, you know, 35 year, exactly. 35 year hunter and competitive shooter. And, you know, now getting into uh, being an archery coach as well. So, Archery coach, archery shooter. Very cool. All right, Sam, if I wanted to improve my physical health with just a quick little five-minute workout, what tiny piece of advice would you give me? So I like your, your 15 minutes, drop down, do, do 11 push-ups. That's awesome. Uh, for me, it's when I roll out of bed in the morning, it's 30 push-ups, 30 squats, um, 30 uh, leg lifts, whatever the case may be. So I get lower leg, core, and upper body, and that really takes – no time at all and you add one every day then you're always constantly building into the into the muscle groups and then you're moving on to the next thing and go take for the rest of your day i love it so i uh there's this new kind of trend craze whatever it is i think it's called like the 30 30 30. i love to do you know 30 push-ups for me oh i mean you can do sit-ups whatever you want and 30 ounces of water with within the first 30 minutes i think it's also yep. 30 grams of protein you heard of that one i have um, proteins, you know, it's definitely a necessity. I don't know if I want to have 30 grams of protein right when I start my morning though. Maybe that's the challenge. I don't know. I'll have to look into <laughs> it and see if it works out. I mean, 30 grams is, yeah. I mean, that's a couple of eggs plus some what, avocado, throw some turkey bacon. That's a good, that's a good amount of protein to start it, off with. Right. You're, you're jumping into it deep. Interesting. Maybe that'll be our daily chat. No, I'm kidding. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, can you, um, what, what on your life journey taught us this tip? Uh, I had a buddy of mine. I was in the military. I got up and worked out first thing in the morning in the military. Um, and I've taken that a little bit to the extreme as I've gotten older and gotten out of the military. So now I just keep it going. It, it keeps me from having to do a major workout throughout the course of the day because you've already been fasting. Now you're waking up, you're doing a quick little workout, you're getting your heart rate up, you're getting your uh, breathing up, you're building those muscles every day, and then you're off to the rest of your day. So it, it means it gives you an opportunity to, not that you shouldn't work out the rest of the day, but it gives you an opportunity to start your morning with a quick, easy workout. At least get your body flowing, get some muscle building. All right, so you do 30 you do thirty push-ups or sit-ups or what did you uh, mix so it up? Minimum, yeah, it's, so it's minimum 30 push-ups. 30 squats, 30, whether it's 30 seconds as a plank or 30 leg lifts, but it's always upper, lower, and core. Upper, lower, and core. Okay. So 30 of each. And so if you're watching at home and 30 seems like a lot, start with five. Do you know, yeah, five upper one body, five lower body, five core. And then drink some water. That's right. Awesome, Sam. Well, that's it. Very good. 30. So 30, when you first wake up, that's the first thing you do. Very first thing rolling right out of bed. I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for your advice, Sam. We're going to move Absolutely. on to our next guest. We'll put you backstage for a second. Next up, we have Vicky. Vicky, who are you? Hi, I am Vicky Midwood. I am a mom. I am a cat lover. I'm a health coach, addiction eliminator. I'm an author and a podcaster. Holy shit, you do too much. Give it a rest, why don't you? <laughs> if I wanted to improve my physical health with a five-minute workout, Vicky, what tiny tip would you give me? I would habit stack it. So tack it on to something that you're already doing. And Ooh. for me, that would be a kitchen workout while the kettle is boiling and you're making ah. your first cup of tea. <laughs> all right, all right. So... Tea, coffee, 
uh, your beer while you're cracking your beer, whatever you're drinking. <laughs> well, first thing I hope it's not a beer. <laughs> you know, it takes time to open that vodka bottle at, at eight in the morning. Okay. Uh, so, so what kind of a workout would you do then? You know, you're, you're so for I a like while. to go with uh, body weight because I think as women, particularly, it's so important that we don't shy away from using our bodies to do things like press ups and planks and squat jumps and lunges and that sort of stuff. And if you're in the kitchen, you can always grab something to make it a little bit heavier if you want to, like a couple of bottles of whatever's in there that's heavy. I don't know, fabric Vodka. conditioner. Fabric conditioner, tins of beans, whatever's, whatever's oh, okay. there. But do 20 seconds of an exercise. Have a ten, have a little 10-second breather and then do it again four times. And what I like to do, pick two exercises. That's all. So you don't need to overthink it. You do one of the exercises four times. Then you do the second exercise four times, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, done. And what I suggest people do is that they just get their body moving for the first minute so that you got a minute of mobilizing, kettles boiling, put the tea bag in, do one round of four exercises, uh, sorry, four rounds of one exercise. And then by that time, the tea should be ready, take the bag out, do the next exercise, job done. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right. So, so yeah, so tea kettle, how long does the kettle take to like boil or heat or Whatever. Well, if it's, if it's first thing in the morning and it's from cold, it's going to take a little while, isn't it? It's going to take two or three minutes. So that's going to give you time to mobilize for the first minute and do two minutes of one exercise four times. I love it. I mean, it's almost like, you know, Sam, he's a go-getter, gets up and goes. I'm more on your pace. Like, all right, let's go get something going. Yeah. You know, I'll do 11 push-ups, get my day rolling. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so this could happen while the coffee pot's going. This yeah. could happen while the tea kettle is there. If you don't drink either of those things, what would be another good time? What do you have? To, what else do you have to wait for? Maybe while your eggs are cooking? Uh, yeah, anything that requires you to wait. So it could be that you're you're boiling something, or you're, you've got something in the oven that's only in there for five minutes, or under the grill, and you've got to keep an eye on it. Whatever way you can't walk away from the kitchen, and you can utilize the work surface to do your press ups on. You can hold on to it to do your lunges if your balance isn't great. So the uh, just working out in the kitchen is just so easy to do, and there's always there's always something to utilize to make it harder or easier. I love it. And so for the workout, you know, Sam, I like his uh, upper, lower, and core. Do you have anything in particular? Do you mix it up each day? Absolutely. Um, yeah, okay. for sure. So the beauty of doing this is, depending on how good you are at thinking of things in the morning, you could do just one exercise eight times, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, eight rounds done. And you could pick a different exercise every single day. So you end up going through your whole body by the end of the week. You could do it that way. Or you could pick two exercises that are both upper body one day. And then the next day, two exercises that are lower body. The next day, two exercises that are core based. The next day, two that are cardio based. And then you can mix it up. So in other words, the opportunities are endless. You can play around with it. So it's never the same. And here's a pro pro secret tip that we're adding into this episode. If you don't know your exercise, or you're confused or you're bored or you want ideas, yeah. Just go ask Sam or go ask Vicky, shoot him a little Instagram DM and say, hey, I'm running out of ideas while my kettle's boiling. And I'm sure that Vicky will have probably like 10 to 15 that she'll give you. Um, and Sam will have plenty too. So if you're running out of quick little ideas, use your resources that we have right here. All right, Vicky, where on your life journey did you learn this tip? Well, here's the thing. I've been a fitness instructor for 33 years. So, so exercise is definitely part of my life. But working with clients who have got not a lot of time, but still want to keep their body moving, it's just a simple way of getting it into your day. And even if you can't do anything else, at least you know you've done that. That's true. Yeah. And I think that one of the biggest parts, especially for me, I mean, I play team sports and that's amazing. Like I like the competitive, but like working out on my own, man, I've never been to a gym. So being able to get little bits in here and there is like, I think that's a lot of people's problem. They're like, I don't want to set 30 minutes off to go work out. So, I mean, if my kettle's boiling, yeah, get some push ups in, get some sit ups, whatever it is, and just make sure that we're always moving. Absolutely. Awesome, Vicky. I love it. Looks like our audience loved it too. Thank you so much. I'm going to put you backstage and move on to our next guest. Uh, our next guest here is Ross. Ross, who are you? 
I'm Ross Alexander. I live in Central Texas. I'm a performance and physical fitness trainer for young athletes. Been doing training since 2003. I was a two sport collegiate athlete. And I have since October been working on my public speaking and motivational speaking brand as well. Cool. All right. Collegiate athlete, motivational speaker. Fuck yeah. Looks like he's pretty physically fit over there. Hey, <laughs> if I wanted to improve my physical health with a five minute workout, Ross, what's a tiny tip that you would give me? Uh, I could give you a ton of tips, but what I really like to focus on uh, today would be just stressing your bones. Right. So uh, so the way I would work on that is uh, typically what you want to do is you would want to carry weight or put weight on you. I know you brought up the fact of, you know, going from, you know, a small village to a metropolitan area. And if you look at like TikTok and YouTube, like you see people in small villages all across the world and they put rocks together and they find pieces of furniture and all that stuff. My big my two favorite things to do are yoke walks, which is putting some sort of weight on your back. Or on your shoulders and walking, right? Okay. So it doesn't require you to have to squat or that, or if you want a farmer's walk, which is holding on each side, each hand, holding, holding weight, and you know, walking. I found the best thing to do is walking about 20, 30 feet, putting the weight down on the farmer's walk, turning back around and then walking it back. And then on the uh, yoke walk, uh, the same type of thing, or just making one giant U-turn circle. Of course, those are full body workouts. Like those are full body, very intense workouts, and you're not going at a hard or high intense pace. Uh, so if you do those for two and a half minutes each, say, hey, I'm going to walk back and down there five times, uh, then you could really get a full body workout in those five minutes just doing that. Now, I could also go through a few other things. Uh, with that, but I will say that, you know, doing this type will help you manage your weight. Uh, it'll help lose weight, helps with your metabolism, helps burn calories, and it really just enhances your quality of life. All right, Ross, we got, we're going to interrupt this real quick. We've got a question from the audience. How much time do you spend in the gym? For me? Oh, me? I've really narrowed it down. Uh, when I was younger, of course, I'd, I had all the time in the world, two, three hours at a time. Guys, I literally last night I spent 25 minutes in the in, in the gym hitting my shoulders. I did a total of maybe 30 or 40 different sets of what I wanted. You could definitely bring that down. That's just what I did. Um, I could literally get through a full body workout in 30 minutes. So, but I will tell you this: when I go do uh, about two days a week, I do those walks. That's the majority of my workout. Uh, after that, my my I'm I am so winded and my body is already fatigued i will just go into my garage gym where i hold all my commercial equipment and i'll just typically do like very light accessory stuff i'll start stretching or whatnot because when i do that that blows that will just that just blows my body up cool um where on your life journey did you uh well, we do have another question but we'll answer that later on for you um where in your life journey did you learn this tip I just, Man, just the number of people that I've talked to. I've been I've been lucky enough to be, be around some influential people. Um, I've one of my mentors. He used to train uh, Olympic uh, Olympic athletes. One of my other mentors I trained under was an Olympic athlete. He actually uh, still holds a high jump in Olympic. And uh, I'm sorry, the high the, the Olympic record in the high jump. Uh, I've worked under uh, coaches that are directly under a gentleman that you that actually developed the strength training uh regimens and way that you structure a workout for crossfit uh so i've been around a lot of great people in my life and of course i continue my education i, I will tell you this if you have any doubt in what stress to your bones does go get an x-ray i've been squatting and doing lifting since i was 12 years old a few years ago i went to a chiropractor and he did an x-ray on my back and he says dude you have the spine of an 18 year old and i was 37 Damn. at the time so yeah all right, we have a question from the audience. Do you wrestle? Are you are you? It's probably from the shirt I'm wearing. Uh, so I, I, uh, I, I, you know, the, I go do uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and catch wrestling. It's it's not your your typical uh, uh, wrestling that you go into. Catch wrestling is like the grandfather of professional wrestling. Uh, when you go and do the Greco Roman or the freestyle wrestling, that is actually a little brother to catch wrestling. Uh, back in the day, pretty much the way it went about was these catch wrestlers were very dynamic and they could hurt each other. 
So when they want to teach their their sons and, and children, they develop the freestyle type of wrestling that you see in high schools and colleges today to get them used to that type of base. And then as they got older, they would then put in the submissions. So I so I, I do that just to, like I said, for great cardio. Got it. Awesome. All right. Well, dang, Ross, thank you so much. We're gonna we're gonna bring Vicky and Sam back out and have a little discussion. Hey, Sam, can you quickly refresh what your tip was? Absolutely. So you're going to wake up in the morning. You're going to do whatever that number is, but 20 to 30 push-ups, 20 to 30 squats, 20 to 30 core exercises, and then you're off to the races for the day. All right, wake up, get your upper lower core, and then start your day. Vicky, what are your thoughts on that tip? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a great believer in getting your body moving as, as soon as possible when you get out of bed. Um, as long as you mobilize your joints first and, and you're warm enough and ready to rock and roll, it just energizes you, starts your day in a great way. I love it. Awesome. Hey, uh, Ross, what do you think about that tip? Uh, I, I think moving around is great, especially as we get older. You have to be able to move your joints and move your uh, move your tendons and everything. Like I get up every morning and I stretch and do some sort of mini yoga type of thing. And I like I stretch and do dynamic and dynamic exercises, mainly for my hips with no weights included because the body weight will do it for me. But after you get up, you're able to trust me. If you ever wake up and try to get on the ground, especially I'm, I'm 41 now, you start feeling it in your mid 30s. And you're like, man, it hurts to get down. And then after you do some of those stretches and some of that dy dynamic work, you're able to get up a lot easier. And it's just something that you should really do as you get older. Stretching is definitely underrated, especially yeah. once you hit fucking 30 and you're fucking tired and sore all day. <laughs> Vicky, what was uh, – please refresh us what your tip was. Yeah, so mine is 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds rest – eight times that's four minutes in total and you can either just do one exercise and make it different every day or pick two and alternate between them and you can do it while your eggs are cooking your tea yeah. is boiling or your coffee makers making your coffee absolutely you can use body weight you can add some stuff to make it a little bit harder if you want to add some extra intensity you could add some jumps if you want to so it's really up to you how easy or challenging and it might be different every day I love it. What a great addition to your routine. Ross, what are your thoughts? Oh, for what she does is great. Uh, are you talking about my tip or thoughts? I'm talking on about me? your thoughts on Vicky's tip. Oh, I love it. Like, I mean, just find something. And then throughout the day, you do a little bit. Now you don't worry about doing it at the end of the day. Or when you're really tired, say, so I'll do it tomorrow. You already know you kind of got that in. Uh, your metabolism is kind of picking up. You're burning calories while you're waiting to take in some calories. I mean, you're kind of offsetting that. So yeah, I love what, I love that thought. I'll be honest, Vicky. My wife does that. Like my wife is a former bodybuilder, and she will be making making something in the kitchen, and then like she peeks out and she's in the dining room doing squats while that while whatever is cooking is cooking. So yeah, nice. Yeah, I love, love it. it. Yeah. Sam, what are your thoughts on Vicky's tip? I know it's somewhat similar to yours. It, it it's spot on. You know, ties right directly with mine. So yeah, I, I, all on board. Let's make sure that we're getting some type of exercise in every day. If you're if you're a go-getter and a morning person, Sam, get up, go do your 30, 30, 30. If you're a little slower to start your day, maybe you got to turn that teapot, turn that coffee pot on, you know, at least get something in with Vicky. Hey, Ross, can you quickly refresh us what your tip was? Yeah. Find something to put stress on your bones. Uh, lifting it with your hands in an even manner, putting something on your back. And the thing is this, is you don't have to worry about even moving. You just really just walk. So nice, steady walking. Uh, do I would say do five rounds of each for about 20 to 30 feet there and back. It turns out to be about 40 to 60 feet. You want it to be, it doesn't even have to be heavy, just be moderate. You need to be moderate because it's working your whole body out. You're doing an aerobic, uh, you're getting an aerobic effect doing an anaerobic movement, which anaerobic is, you know, putting your body under stress due to the weight, but you're getting an aerobic effect because it's going to lift your heart rate up right. to that, to those fat burning zones. And like I said, it's easy. Like you can find something, hey, this is about even out. Let me hold it on both my hands and walk this far and back or put it on my back, walk this far and back. And I think that's great. You don't have to do it. Like You don't do it first thing in the morning. You just find a time to do it, but it's five minutes. Let me put some stress on my body and go. 
I mean, even here, my idea at least is when I'm on a, making phone calls, phones on speaker, and I'm doing you know doing my work or whatever. Shit, I could be doing it during this episode. I might just have to start walking around while I'm talking to you guys. Go get some gallons of water, right? <laughs> yeah, get some gallons, and I'll just pace back and forth while I'm interviewing people. There Sam, what are your thoughts on Ross's tip? So I, I really like that one as well. Um, I'm a huge fan of using brute force sandbags for that type of workout. So sand gives you that flexibility of weight. Um, cost, you know, sand is exponentially cheap. But the brute force sandbags give you that flexibility. The sand shifts. It forces your not only your, your bones to move, but your muscles and your reaction time of how that sand shifts so that you can really build that whole body workout. So, yeah, I'm all, all on board with that one. Vicky, what are your thoughts on Ross's tip? Yeah, I, I love it because I think it's so important for women, especially over a certain age, to be really mindful of their bone density. And, you know, I say to all of my clients, this is females, you should be able to do 10 press ups with your full body weight toes on the floor. Because if you fall, you got to be able to lift yourself up. And utilizing, I love the fact that you put something on your shoulders, but my brain goes to, women at home what can they use give your kids a piggyback walk around the garden <laughs> right because that's the overload and you don't have to have special equipment the same thing with the farmer's walk you know what how many times do people get heavy shopping bags but put them in the cart how about you leave yeah. the cart at the door of the supermarket and carry the shopping bags right in your hands i know in america you don't tend to have bags with handles on but we in the uk do right so farmers walk because that grip strength especially as we get older is just so so important so i really love that tip and as you say you don't have to do a lot that's the thing just right. start moving and doing something all right guys we're coming up to uh oh we have stretching episode all i think day. it's coming up solar fox um all right guys we have a time actually let's answer this question real quick yeah uh stretching what is your belief on stretching it's key. It's critical. Especially if you don't, it's going to hurt. I agree. Like you need to stretch it. I do. I, that's why I do like about the farmer's walks, to be honest with you, um, especially uh, men as we get older. Um, my father tore his bicep eating a bowl of cereal, right? He had his right up here. Uh, so what I, like a farmer's walk does as far as the stretch, it actually elongates those bicep and tricep muscles to where you don't have an unnecessary tear. Uh, so I, and I, I think I just discussed earlier uh, about, you know, what I do in the morning, the stretch with my hips and my legs and your calves. It just feels so good. Nice. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of stretching, but I'm going to caveat that and say stretches are not the fix for everything. And sometimes stretching can make things worse. And the most important thing is for us to to actually move and mobilize the joints and release tension in the fascia. So I think functional stretching like you do in yoga is is excellent. But you got to make sure if you're going to stretch, you've got to be warm first. Otherwise, it's a bit like trying to stretch a piece of of gum. Right, it just rips in half. You need to make sure that your body oh. is warm. And a lot of people just go straight into stretching and they haven't mobilized and they're not warm. And that's potentially where stretching can actually not be helpful. So mm -hmm. I love it, but do it in a in a way that works with your body and be mindful of what you're doing and why you're doing it. I completely agree. There's a old school bodybuilders, Vicky, actually, m they were not fans of stretching before lifting weights because of that. And they also wanted a sense of tension on their muscles uh, when they lift it so they wouldn't be so limber that they in a sense hurt their tendons or couldn't be able to grow and so a lot of times the stretching occurred after um, when you're like you said your body's warm yeah yeah good tips guys it's my it's that time of the episode where we got to come up with a daily challenge which i think this might be one of the easiest episodes ever <laughs> it has to be five minutes or less per day cost zero dollars and be available to anyone in the world from hong kong to hawaii thoughts body weight exercise it's gotta be get up and do yeah, something I, I, it doesn't matter what it is just get up and do something yeah i agree can we let's say 
Yeah, I want to make. Mm, is it a challenge per day or is it a challenge over a week doing something per day, every day? Per right. day less than five minutes. Okay. Well, get them to do one so, thing for one minute for every single day of the week. A different thing. Like push ups for a minute? Yeah. Squats for a minute, curls for a minute, jumping jacks. That's quite challenging. <laughs> I would say if you took a little bit of what each of us had kind of expressed, yeah. you can make a challenge from there. Like I would say I would get up initially, um, you know, uh, roll out of bed, <clears throat> kind of like what Mr. Westfall does, and just kind of get going there. Even you cut it in half, right? You cut it in half, you go there, then you slide over to what, you know, kind of like what Vicky does. And, and you know, they, okay, I'm kind of getting ready for my day. Let me kind of finish this off. By that time, you're kind of warmed up. Like I said, you have a warm, you know, up. get a half a gallon of water or something like that. And you just kind of start walking around, you know, gallon of water, start walking around. Now that you're getting that stretch in, but you're also putting that, you know, that stress on your body to kind of get a little bit of weight in. You can even do like get a gallon of water or something kind of heavier in your mouth and do a goblet squat, which is holding weight in front of you, sit back into a squat. Uh, you can just do stuff like that. You can become very, you know, you do a lot of stuff with a, gallon, with a few gallons of water. Um, and I think uh, Sam had brought up the fact of sand or even water. If you did want to build something in a, like a PVC pipe about three inches, three inches in diameter, uh, and then kind of cap it off, you know, kind of move, say, okay, I've already kind of stretched and I've kind of moved around. Let me go outside. I'm about two and a half minutes in. Let me go outside and kind of walk around the yard and have this sand or water move back and forth in this PVC pipe that literally costs three bucks. Uh, and you, you just, you can just become very, do what you want to and become imaginative and creative with, with five minutes of stuff, to be honest with you. But I guess I would say after they're doing that, get a gallon of water and move around. <laughs> if we want to do a challenge, let's just, let's just walk around the, 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 the living room and kitchen with two gallons of water. After you've done all that, get a little bit of stress on your body and you finish off the, uh, the five minute challenge that way. All right. So here's what I think I've got from everyone. I think that the the point that we're going to try to focus over the next week is different, unique times you can work out. So I'm going to say that you do, you know, sit-ups or push-ups or a walk while you're waiting. And I want something different each day. So if you're waiting in line for the DMV, I want to see you doing jumping jacks. If you're in an airplane waiting, let's see you do like, you know, some wall sits or something. Cause that I think that'll help us get our mind learning that we can work out at all times, you know, and it doesn't have to be like all the sweaty, get your workout clothes on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, you can just be like in your car even, and just like, you know, lifting a fucking water jug or something. So I, I think that I like, um, I like, I'm not going to put a time limit on it. Obviously I like doing it in the morning and I like, uh, you know, trying to do that. But I think for anyone in the world, we try to focus on the, and proving that there's a lot of different you can work out at any time anywhere almost i mean we could be doing this show with just water jugs right now like don't make it harder than it has to be yeah yeah so i i think that we want to spend i think that the focus i'm getting from you guys is that you can really i mean you could just grab jugs and walk around while you're on the phone like all this shit so i think the focus is every day we we work it out at a new unique time that we haven't worked out before in a uni, new unique way and we take, obviously, I'm going to take pictures and post on social media of a new unique way to work out. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds good. We're going to have a lot of videos of people walking around with water jugs because they're Ross, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Cool. All right. Well, that will be our daily challenge. Dun, 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 dun. Yay. That brings us to the awesome. end of the episode. Thank you all so much for coming. Hope you guys had a blast. Um, I'm going to say a few last words and then we're all done. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for watching another episode of millionaires are made. I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, working out does not have to be a crazy tough thing. It's all about a little bit of movements here and there. Fuck. You can do it while you're waiting for your kettle to heat. Um, learned a lot about bones and stretching and, and just doing that constantly. Hopefully you guys took some advice in and I can't wait to see you on the daily challenge. I hope today is the best day of your life until tomorrow.